Sturdley in the 38th century. Go ahead, play the back. The Buck Sturdley Show. <laughs> Hello, boys and girls. Once again, it's time for Buck Sturdley in the 28th century. The story of things to come and what might happen in the 28th century. Sir Henry found my ray gun. Buck and Wilma are now entering a rocket. How do you ship. like it? I don't know. I guess we don't. We get it. <laughs> Is that heavenly music we hear? Or is that Ken Wilson playing? That's the Ken Wilson. That ain't heaven. No. Hold up, steady. Which way they go? Hey, that was something <laughs> extra there. This is, is that a bad um, note you've got on there? Bill has had the piano tuned, I think, since last week. What is this about celebration for John Day, Bob? Yeah, John Day. Well, John, his wife had a baby. Oh, is that so wrong? Yeah. Well, what do you know about that? Not more than an hour ago. Well, I think we're bad. the first to break this exclusive. This exclusive was Drusilla Larson. Bless you for coming up. And I happen. think it's just wonderful. And uh, why don't you tell us all about uh, John, you know? Well, John has made many pictures, as you know, Dick. I know it. And I'm just up on my soapbox, that's all. And by the way, when you see Daryl, let me know. Daryl who? I forget. By the way, I did hear Miss Luella Parsons last night. Did you? And she had a story on it towards the end of the program that... Uh, I thought it was very funny. Worthy of re-relating? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, she mentioned that uh, some producer had just had a baby. They, they've been married, she said, 12 years, and they had their first child. Uh -huh. He is the producer of Sitting Pretty. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, well. I wonder if Luella had a, a little note of humor in her voice when I she said that. I doubt it. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. Well, it is. we are in a Hollywood mood today, I suppose. Yes. I'm just in from Hollywood, Bob, where I've just made several new pictures. Just fly in, did you? No. <laughs> no, I didn't. I came Tell across about, the chief. Tell us about some... Me bongo. <laughs> Me... These new pictures of yours, what, uh, what what's in the making? What are we... Well, Bob, I, uh, we just did uh, what what you might call the story of food. And, oh, uh, that's a new Technicolor production. I yeah, so Grub. Much. Grub, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah a beautiful picture. Sydney Fat Street. We, we, trace, we trace food from its uh, very beginning right up to the present day. You didn't prices. happen to bring along any uh, uh, transcribed trailers that will be used in uh, connection with the preview of this film, did you? I don't... I believe I did, yeah. Did you really? Yeah, wait. Wait, 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 wait. wait a second. The following is transcribed. Grub, you laugh. You'll cry. You will wish you stayed at home. The story of... Grub. The story of food from the Western Plains. See Hanson Humphrey go kart Lee Tallulah Boathead. Fat Street, as the lovable senorita. In Grub, babies cry for, men fight for, women love for, Grub, the story of both. Black and white. Coming next week to Murphy's Open Air Theater, Back Pasture, New Hampshire. <laughs> and now, Sting Crosby sings, Thank no, he doesn't. I'd love to sing for East... No, I won't sing. You're not singing today. I understand you you sung on Saturday. Yes, I, I did. I wasn't able to hear the program. Oh, great. <laughs> I had a lot, of requests. a lot of nice comments about it today. Did you really? Nice. Yeah. This is a nice bright day to start the week off This on, is the it? hottest September 13th, or will be, on record. Yes, so? By the time the sun sets tonight, just think, we will have set another record. It will be the hottest September 13th in recorded history. Gee. We're old really timers, breaking it. Old-timers right? say, hottest they can recall. Mm-hmm. We'll be having pictures of kids at Revere Beach lost with no yeah. clothes on except the police hat. Hard in mass think. exodus to escape heat. Yeah. Old timers say, I think so. Weatherman sees relief in sight, however. I suppose. We'll have some cool weather before long. Cool Canadian air. And uh, Canadian ace air. Right all. And I think we should uh, do something about this weather picture, maybe drop down to the Weather Bureau. Why don't we drop in there and take a look at some of these seismographs and Fredanga Richardses right. that they have down there. Let's... Buck Sturdley. No, this is transition music. If that is transition music. Well, that's wind. Thunder. We better mention what, is what it, the Ken sound program? Has. Hold up, steady. He must have a friend listening who he's auditioning for. Are you auditioning for something today, Ken? Mm hmm. For wind effects this is or the something? The new musical weatherman show. Oh, no, that's Kenneth well. Wilson. Isn't that one of them? <laughs> well, there we are at the Weather Bureau. Welcome. Boy, look at that over there, hey. Uh, do you have any questions? 
They ask wow. for the weather bureau. What is this intricate-looking instrument here? That's my watch. Oh, I beg your pardon. <laughs> uh, this thing over here with the fan on the end of it. Oh, that's how we judge the humidity in the air. You mean the velocity? If that fan melts down, it's pretty humid. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah? We check it. What are your prospects for weather for the next couple of days? We got a have any? Well, uh, we'll have a good hot day today. Uh, we'll have a little relief when the sun goes down. There'll be a bright northerly wind blow up. There'll be some offshore winds blowing on the shore. And tomorrow we expect a little relief. How about that? In the, the form of uh, precipitation. How about the cranberry bogs? That's rain. What? <laughs> cranberry bogs. The cranberry bogs, uh, they'll, they'll pretty generally have the same kind of weather we'll have up here. That's all? Yeah, don't worry about any frost or nothing. I'm not worried about it a bit. Well, what you ask for, you know what I mean? Well, just happen to be here. Now, this little thing here is how we can determine tremors all over the earth. Determine what? Tremors. Tremors? Like if the earth rumbles, it uh, makes a little mark on this here gadget. Hey, that's pretty good. Hey, yeah. look, it's rumbling now, I guess, because yeah. it's making a lot of marks here. Well, it must be an earthquake. Uh, let me see. I would say it's well, about 4,000 miles south of the South Pole. Wow. Uh, you think we should not... worry about it? Not, uh, not in your life. No, it's about 4,000 miles northeast of the uh, Fiji's. Wow, okay, then. That. That's, that's pretty good. Well, you, can, you can't stick me on anything like that. No, that's pretty good. Yeah. How about flying weather? Will I have my VFR today? Well, uh, yes. Uh, I'd like to say that it'll be uh, VFR today. However, you can make only one final landing. You can go up as many times as you want, but you just come, come down, down once. once. Okay, well, thanks anyway. Wilco. Roger. Over. Out. Right. Well, I'd love to have Ken Wilson play some music and if Bill Green will play along, all of that. I don't think they will because they're not speaking to each other again today. Oh, is that so? What's the matter with them now? Well... Green wanted his microphone closer to the piano so they couldn't hear so much organ. And, uh, well, that handball. Wilson <laughs> didn't quite go for the idea. I don't know. I, I saw Bill in here just before the program went on, and I, I don't know whether he moved the microphones or not. But, well, how uh, do you like that? I think we'll hear both instruments. Let's let's uh, try them. Wait a minute. Just a moment, Mr. Wilson. Yeah, don't get don't anxious. Don't be so eager. Relax. I mean, that's the first thing you musicians should learn. You will always play better if you are completely relaxed and at ease. Don't fall off. The I mean, seat. if you're up on your toes, you can hardly play the, the organ. So uh, I'd suggest relax. Now, what is your first number, Sit John? back. Remember back. that we're all... We're my all your song friends. again you're playing. <laughs> we're all your friends here, and, and don't you, you mind... my song. Well, I'm sorry about that. Nothing I can do about it at this late date. All right, here they are. Are you completely relaxed? Don't you mind... <laughs> Shoes today? 
Let's try that again. Left, again. left clodhopper. You know, you know, friends, that he plays the organ. Uh, there's these little wooden stakes that run across there, and he hits awful things with them with, well, when he hits them right. But when he has on snowshoes like that, you just heard what happened. Kind of difficult for him. All right, Mr. Wilson. That's good. Now, oh, The Life and Loves of Linda Lovely, written for radio by E. Carrington Lump. Today, we find Linda and David in a new setting, high up in the grandstands at Wonderland Revere. They sit expectantly waiting for the first race. Well, excuse me, announcer. Uh, I think you better inform the listeners first mm-hmm. that they won't see any race. Oh. Uh, Wonderland closed Saturday night for the I season. I can't change the copy. I'm sorry. That's well, can we make it the West Peabody Speedway, for goodness sakes? I'm sorry. I, it says Something Wonderland. will be going on there. I it mean. says Wonderland Revere. That's what Lump wrote. I can't change it. Well, all right. So, uh, Sitting high up in the stands, expectantly waiting for the first race to run at Wonderland, we see Linda and David, and we hear Linda speak. Oh, David, here we are, waiting anxiously for the race for Wonderland. Yes, I, I don't think we'll have to wait much longer. Why, David? I think the first race is just about to be run. Do you, my darling? I... I have a schedule here. Have you, sweetheart? That's the nicest thing I ever said to you. Oh, the schedule says darling. first race, 7.45. Yes, my sweet, we're here early, too. We are. It's... Such good seats. Only 1.15. <laughs> I... I wonder... Who will win the first race? Ah. I say, I wonder who will win. Oh, David, I don't know who will win the first race. I wonder who will win it. The first race, David. Oh, let's get out of here. All right. No, No, that's just that first scene there. Then we have to... We go cross town. Meanwhile... Meanwhile, cross town in an expensive penthouse-type apartment, the two detectives talk excitedly of the crime about to be committed. Hey, Jane. Yes, Lucille. Uh, you think of me a crime committed that we can talk excitedly about? There's uh, supposed to be a crime committed very shortly within the next 24 hours. We'll probably talk excitedly about it when it happens. I should imagine we'll probably solve it. Will it be a murder or a holdup, a daring holdup? Well, Lucille, I don't know. Well, I don't know, Jean, either. I don't know from nothing. It's uh, sitting here in this expensive penthouse apartment is smoking these 25 cents cigars. Doesn't add up to me. Doesn't add up to me. I think we ought to find the criminal. Well, who do you suggest we go after? You know what I mean? Oh, I don't know. We Got any could, idea? Could you get know? out of Charlie's Tavern, I suppose. And... Yeah, let's get out of here and have some of his grand spaghetti. Yeah. Hiya, gents. Well, it be. Hey, spaghetti. Yeah, spaghetti for two. You ain't heard about no murders or nothing, have you? No, but I'm expecting to hear you two guys talk excitedly about a murder probably to be committed in the next 24 hours or so. Well, that's what we're planning. See, uh, yeah, he and I are a couple out. of private eyes, you know what I mean? A couple of private eyes. And if anything happens like a crime or something, we'll talk, like excitedly crime, about it. we'll talk excitedly about it. Some yeah, happen. I can see what you mean. Something will happen probably in about 24 hours. It'll probably hours. happen in 24 hours. Or so. Well, look, uh, get us that spaghetti, will you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, hey, um, hey, uh, Jim. Well, well, that's a little big fast, even platefuls of spaghetti. I thought this was a cooked order, you know? Yeah, I thought that was a cooked order. We're going to have a it crime. cooked order. We're going to have a crime. You probably have a crime, won't you? Yeah. And maybe that's a crime we're supposed to talk excitedly about, Lucille. What? The one that we're going to commit. Maybe let's talk excitedly about it. Oh, boy. Boy, this is great. We're going to shoot this fellow, you know? Real exciting. Yeah. Hope we find out it's us. Let's eat the spaghetti first. All right, go ahead. Ah, mighty tasty. You're not eating that right. Oh, that's your necktie I I got on there. I was going to say, you're not eating that right. Oh, I guess I ain't. It's okay. It's a cheap tie. If it tastes good, eat it. Yeah. Let me try some spaghetti on it. How's the spaghetti, gentlemen? Tastes like it's got a tie on it. Tastes like like neckties on it. (laughs) Well, that's what it's supposed to taste like, I suppose. Excuse me. Yes. You two fellows, uh, detectives? We're both detectives. Follow me. I got a crime you can talk excitedly about. When's it going to be committed? About 24 hours. You better go, gents. This may be the big break you've been looking for. Thanks. The spaghetti was good, Ed. Spaghetti was fine, and so was the necktie. So long. long. Oh, meanwhile... Uncle Jim, Ned, Billy, Grace, and the... Th- uh, what is it? The 333rd Infantry? Field Artillery. ...are marching through deep, dark, dank Africa. As we look in on them now, no one is speaking. 
So we return to San Francisco in the little waterfront hideout of Joe. Just the other day, I heard a fellow say... How did that get in there? Yeah. Give me mission, Bell. Well, supposed to go 115? No, it's supposed to go 125, but I'm giving it a... Jumping the gun a little bit. Pardon while I rave. I like that, don't you? It's a wonderful song. That was made into a popular song, wasn't it? Yeah. What was the name of that popular... Prince George Hotel. No. It was. No, but I was another EP. Same one. They stole it. You want a better name? I think. No, it's two different songs. You're confusing. What was the song about the Prince Prince George? Or something like that. Da, 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 dee, oh, that. Da, dee, da, dee, dee, dee. At the Prince George Hotel. Hotel. That doesn't even rhyme. No, you're wrong. <laughs> well, we said for a if you are going to them, stop off at the Prince George Hotel and tell them the old salt sent you. That's right. They'll be happy to. Yes, and now, <laughs> uh, are we going to sing a song today? We no, have they song. played my one song that I wanted to Why sing. Why don't we have a gay, happy community sing? Why don't right. we sing uh, Through the Fire Ducks? Oh, all right. Well, we don't have the words to that, though. Well, why don't we sing I mean, our... Why them. don't we go into our, our second act? We had a phone call this morning requesting that we go into our second act of our Salome. Well, for the Salome. Okay. Your musical opera. Mr. Wilson is always only too glad to do one of these. You'll remember, friends, sitting here in box 84, the first two acts didn't prove to be very much. The curtain broke down, and the second one... The cast went out on strike, I believe. Uh, is that right? Unfortunately, the organist stayed on. The organist is still here. The uh, prima donna... Uh, I know. I ...is all set to uh, give out with the aria from uh, Act 3, Scene 1. Uh, she's tuning up now. You can I put the rose in the garden. probably hear her. She is standing at stage left, I which, of course, is her right. Garden. Her voice, her voice re-echoes with timber. <laughs> and she walks in and amongst the garden. This morning, bright and early, I plucked a flower in the garden. The translation of this phrase is that she plucked a flower in her garden this morning, I bright and early. The garden. Then she seems to make a mistake. Oh, she seems rather embarrassed. <laughs> Standing there, Excuse at the me, same she plucked the garden, the, the Excuse organist me, everybody. is fine. <laughs> she excuses herself and goes back into the star. It's woman underwear. It's too hot for this thing. <laughs> the organist picks the cue right up, though, and she continues with the second verse. <laughs> Three members of the audience walk out. In the garden. And more will follow, no doubt. Garden. She seems to be stuck for a little. Behind the hedge. Well, we've learned at least where the garden is. It's behind the hedge. And... Hold up, Polkhead. Take to the hills. Uh-oh, the hill something bus. seems to have gone wrong there. The cast is rapidly dispersing, leaving the stage. I... The prima donna doesn't seem to have seen the... Put the rose between my teeth. She has uh-huh. put the rose between her teeth. She's standing, get out, huh? standing there and seems to be in some sort of trouble. I can't get out. <laughs> She's trying to sing, obviously, but I don't think that uh, the organist seems to have lost his place in the music, too. I and think we ought to discontinue this act. Oh, there that... goes the music falling all over the floor. And now he's bending over to pick it up. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> We're running into all sorts of trouble. I think we'd better just let the curtain fall. Right off. Let it fall. We can. Well, somebody caught it. It didn't follow. Could you oh, afford wait. that, Ken? Well, that takes more power to make one of those noises. Here. Just the other day, I heard a fellow say, Give me mean, Mission Bell wine because... <clears throat> Mission Bell is fine. Well, now. Pardon yeah. while I rave about like the some... money that I save. Buy a Mission Bell wine because Mission Bell's fine. Drink it. That's the second chorus. And yet I say, give me mission the wine. I wonder if we're as good as the... Uh, no, we're not. Here are a couple of professionals. Three of them, probably. It sounds like musical four. Four. Mission Bell's 
the wine to tempt you and the price is right. The price is right. The price is right. You bet it's right. Delicious, delightful Mission Bell wine brings you top quality at low popular prices. That's because every step from grape to glass stays in the hands of the Arakalian family. Yes, sir, pure California wine at its best. That's why it's every day you hear everybody say, Give me Mission Bell wine because Mission Bell wine because Mission Bell wine because Mission Bell wine. Because... Produced by K. Arakalian Incorporated, California, New York, and Chicago. In Cucamonga. <laughs> And they have a warehouse over in Chelsea. I think they probably do over there. We were supposed to get a baseball announcement in. You Mary, really? just before you uh, come yeah, up here. I know you have a good recipe. Today. No, I don't. I haven't come prepared with a recipe at all. Well, I'll give you time to get one together then. If you all right, all right, Bob. If you want to talk about baseball. Yes, uh, there's a telegraphic play-by-play description of that game. Between Will there be Saint a telegraphic Browns, play-by-play today, Bob? Cleveland Indians. I Excuse think me. Will. Yes. Uh-huh. At Cleveland, 2.15. Well, it'd be, time. Bob, anyway. Be at Cleveland. Oh, yes. So set your dial at WHDH oh, for the game course. between the St. Louis Browns. The Cleveland Indians are 2.15 today. Should I tune 2 in? 2.15. Right old. For fun in the baseball quiz show. <clears throat> now, wait a minute. I'll do this in the Norman Prescott style. And for fun. The baseball <laughs> quiz show. Play ball with Jerry Leary. Be tuned to WHDH two o'clock this afternoon. What's that? <laughs> what is that play ball? Huh? What is, what is that play ball? Quiz program. Oh, is that that terrific baseball. type show? Yep. Now, how about this recipe that you that you had all prepared and ready to give with? Excuse me, Bob, for butting in here, but sure. she did have a very good question, and I think you should answer it. What's what that? is fun on the play ball show? I mean, would you I get a good I listen to the promotionals. I don't listen to the radio. I mean, is it a fun show? Or is that what it's it is? packed with fun. And laughs and mirth and everything. Laugh a minute. Uh-huh. And what time should I tune in for that? Two o'clock today. Uh-huh, okay. But not every day. I'd suggest you consult your local newspaper. Speaking of uh, baseball and all, this is the big week for baseball. Good this week. is the next week. And I'd like to go out on the limb right now. <clears throat> all right, will you Help use this one right, right here? Right here, Greg. It yeah. doesn't look too strong. Uh, right. You may <clears throat> fall down. Don't ah, worry about me. <laughs> I'll be okay, Bob. Everything's all set. Huh? I'm going to go out on the limb. Yeah, and you're sure you'll be all right. Okay. You're safe. Oh. Are you still out there? I wasn't going to say anything that was important no, anyway, Bob. I don't believe it. I was going to say something about the Red Sox and the Braves, but after that limb went on me like that, I don't think I will. Yeah. Mary, won't you Wake come out of here, please? <laughs> Nobody sleeps. Mary? Yes, Bob. Now, don't you have something <clears throat> instructive for this afternoon? Yes, I have. Lentil soup. <laughs> well, that's... What's the matter, Bob? <laughs> nothing you sort of caught me unaware. Yes, there's nothing like a little lentil soup. No, I guess there isn't. Because you can't stand too much of it. <laughs> no, that's right. <laughs> but if you like lentils and you're a soup fan, uh-huh. then believe me, you'll go for lentil soup. And for fun and lentil soup, tune in and play ball. Yeah. Now, uh, how do you go about uh, preparing this delicious? Well, you scrape up a lot of lentils. Mm-hmm. Put them into a... Uh, you, do you grow lentils? Depends on there? the size of your family, Bob. Yeah. And just... Pour in the water and let it come to a boil. Mm-hmm. Not much to it, huh? Not a thing to it. Makes a, <laughs> makes a good, uh, strong It makes a good, stock. hearty meal uh-huh. for growing boys. Well, yes. that's, that's what I need. And, and uh, if it boys who aren't growing, it's pretty good, too. <laughs> <laughs> they won't stop them, in other words. No, it won't. Uh-huh. Not like smoking. And you'd, uh, you'd recommend maybe crackers and peanut butter? Excuse me, along with with camels. Did she say something? Yes, she did, sir. She was mentioning that uh, the soup won't... Uh, Stunt people's growth like smoking will. Uh huh. And her name is spelled uh, M C G O O N. Thank you. That's all I wanted to know. I wonder who that was. Gee, I don't know. You know, Ray? He looks like an attorney. Yeah, he did look kind of. He said he was from. What did he say? Yeah, look out the window. He's riding away on one. Yeah. Wow.